So I'm really delighted to have this opportunity to speak this evening with uh, Amara Lahouz, who is the author of several critically acclaimed novels that explore the social, political, and cultural dynamics of um, immigration and cultural diversity in the contemporary European context, and particularly Italy. Um, uh, I don't want to be too biographically determining, but I think that it's fair to say that uh, Amara's novels are very much shaped by his life experiences. Uh, he was born in uh, Algiers in 1970. Uh, uh, he studied philosophy. Uh, he began a career in radio, and he wrote uh, a first novel in Arabic. Then the 1990s, the Décennie Noire, uh, the decade of uh, terrible danger and violence uh, arrived. And like many other people, uh, Amara was faced with a um, decision um, by him to, uh, to leave Algeria and to resettle in Italy, where he basically had to start over. Uh, and in Rome, he worked as a translator. Um, he worked in, as a translator in the context of asylum seekers and in uh, the court system, as I understand it. And he also pursued a, a second degree, having already studied philosophy, he pursued a doctorate in cultural anthropology. Uh, so Amara then wrote a novel in Arabic about his experience as a migrant in Italy. So he wrote this in Arabic, and then, with his Italian improving, he translated it into Italian. Uh, a little bit later, he wrote another version of this novel, in Italian, which I think you then translated into Arabic yourself. <laughs> this is a big issue. Okay. <laughs> we'll come back to this. Yeah, a, lo a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of translation. Yeah. And, of course, in addition to his own writing in Italian and Arabic, his novels have been translated into many other languages, including uh, English and uh, French. Uh, so let me, uh, let me um, highlight just a, a few titles. Uh, I'm just going to hold up Clash of Civilizations over an Elevator in Piazza Vittorio. Um, Divorce Islamic Style. And uh, Dispute over a Very Italian Piglet. And I think as those, um, those titles convey something of Amara's literary signature, which is um, that, that his novels explore very topical, very contemporary, um, hot issues, debates about immigration, integration, Islamism, I don't think I can get rid of this scare quotes really, um, terrorism, um, but, but with a, um, you know, a strong uh, grain of irony uh, and humor. Um, there is, uh, his novels are entertaining, but also serious, tragic. Uh, they're filled with all kinds of uh, interesting references, allusions, pastiches, uh, that range from the very erudite to a lot of pop culture. Uh, there's a lot of Italian cinema references, uh, a lot of soccer, and I, I also have the impression that you spend some of your spare time reading trashy magazines. It's a lot of uh, information about celebrities uh, and soap operas. And, and really um, running the gamut. So you, really, you have references to uh, uh, Arabic sources, but also Italian and um, uh, North American uh, popular culture and uh, intellectual culture as well. Um, so these, these novels have been recognized with several major literary prizes, including the Flaiano Prize for Fiction in Italy and the Prix des Libraires uh, Algérien uh, in Algeria. Uh, this year, um, Clash of Civilizations over an elevator in Piazza Vittorio was adopted at Cornell University for the Freshman Reading Project, which is to say that all incoming freshmen read uh, this novel and discussed it, which is a great honor. Um, let's start with this question. Why 
novels. There are lots of popular forms of cultural mediation. What appeals to you particularly about the novel? The choice of, of the novel actually is based on my uh, reflection about uh, uh, what the most important and uh, efficient uh, way to narrate reality. Um, uh, I think uh, novel novel is the best way to narrate the reality, especially to to understand the complexity of the reality. And uh, studying philosophy, I understood that it's very important to to ask questions. We have a lot of answers, a lot of answers. And I think this is the problem of the of the all religions. Uh, and so studying philosophy I understood that this incredible, this important lesson to ask. Uh, and it's very important to have a different uh, point of view, not just one. And the my experiment in uh, clash of civilizations to have 12, 12 characters and we narrate the same, the same story. And we have really a big uh, uh, view of, of the society. And uh, if, for example, when I wrote my, uh, my dissertation for my PhD, so I was like a judge. I was uh, the eunuch only voice in my dissertation and they say so my, my dissertation it was about uh, Muslims uh, in, in Italy uh, so the most important thing for me as writer is to be a witness to be a witness and uh, actually I read I, 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 I always read a uh, 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 newspapers, reviews, uh, and I'm a good observer. So I, I try to observe the, the reality, and I think the, the novel is, uh, is uh, for me, is uh, the best way to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm struck by your use of the word efficiency, yeah. um, which is one that we often don't hear in connection to the novel in the era of for example, but also because you're often compared to uh, perhaps the least efficient of the novelists of the, the Italian Novecento, and that's Carlo Emilio Garda. Uh, and here's where my long question comes in, so I will be patient with me. Uh, I, I know that you have responded with some surprise to the comparison of your work to that of Garda, including, and especially his 1957 novel, Brutto which, like Sconto di Civiltà, is a murder mystery set in an apartment building, Set in Rome, has a long title, uh, evinces uh, the same predilection for dialects that you do, Neapolitan, Milanese, Roman, uh, and according to some scholars, people like Deborah Everson uh, in particular, uh, would contend that there's an ethical component here in this linguistic melange which serves to expose the uses of the hegemonic language system, those are her terms. Both your novel and his thwart the generic conventions we've come to expect in a whodunit. In either case, do we see the process of diminishing possibility towards uh, the identity of the murderer? But rather, in God, that we see the proliferation of possibilities. Right? And in your work, the refusal of a linear or rational deduction in favor of a kind of kaleidoscopic, multi perspectival uh, series of counter narratives, all of which are equally feasible. Similarly, like God, that your books face head on the question of female embodiment from the nexus of fertility, sexuality, and class. Recall God does Liliana Balucci, who can't seem to get pregnant no matter what she does, and yet every maid in Lazio is knocked up. Similarly, your Peruvian character, Maria Cristina Gonzalez, wants children desperately. But unlike Balucci, Gonzalez is always pregnant and always terminating her pregnancies for fear of losing her job. But of course, Gada's work explicitly foregrounds its protagonist's misogyny. I'm thinking, for example, of when Jorge Pasichacho's narrator calls the murder victim's soul eminentemente ecolalica, right? Ecolalia, of course, is meaningless repetition 
of words and sounds like a child makes when learning to talk. Your protagonist, in contrast, performs a series of howls or ululations, or pure sound, as well but sound that recuperates meaning rather than negates it. So there's a kind of reversal here, the Gaudian move to demote or dehumanize women, insofar as Amadeo's repeated insistence on acoustic presence descript descriptive discursive elements is in fact profound proof of his humanity. So I want to do three things here. But the basic question is, is obvious. It's going to be what do you think of this comparison with God that people can do. But first, uh, the parenthesis. There's another really marvelous kind of feminist rewriting of another famous moment in the history of the great Italian novel of the Novecento, and that's Pirandello's Infumatia Pascal. I'm thinking about how his protagonist faced his own suicide uh, in order ultimately to return to his old identity and thus to confirm the hegemony of bourgeois society. Your female protagonist in Lenzinger at the Dolorigenera de Biorumea, in contrast, in contrast, fakes her suicide as a prelude to a series of acts of social conscience. In doing so, she changes the world. Second part of my parentheses is there's an analogous feminization in Scombe when Amelia says she has a lot, right? So clearly, there is a lot of engagement with some of the great white males of the Italian and French literary canon. And, and yet I sense some resistance um, there, especially in, in, in this fascinating use of the word efficiency. Can you tell me about that relationship? Well, um, I'm so proud of uh, this comparison with uh, Galilei. <laughs> Uganda is, is a giant, so one of the most important writer, I think not just in Italy, but in the history of the church. Uh, so I, um, actually, I, I dedicated uh, uh, a, a program in, in radio, in Italian radio, uh, Radio 3, uh, Channel 3, uh, to explain the relationship, my relationship, relationship with, uh, with Gadda and Chasha, another, another uh, important writer for me. So, uh, so with, with Gadda, I think there are three similarities, important similarities. The first, that we were both immigrants. So he immigrated from Milan to Rome, and actually this is a real immigration. This is a real immigration from north to, to, to south, because a lot of people believe that Rome is south, is not, uh, is not north. Uh, so we were both immigrants. I, I was immigrant from uh, from the south of south, Sud del Sud, uh, from Algeria. Uh, so, but we had both uh, a good uh, relationship with this city uh, because Rome is really an incredible, incredible city. Uh, the second is a second similarity with with uh, Carlo Emilio Ganda is his faith in literature. Gata was really crazy, <coughs> so really crazy. So for, his, for him, literature is, 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 is his life. And I believe in this. I think literature for me is very, very important. Uh, the third, the third similarity is about using language. And Gata actually invented a new language. He tried to mix uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, dialects, and in my novels, I try to do this: to mix Arabic with Italian, Italian with French, French with uh, with uh, Berber, um, and I I work a lot on uh, different dialects. For example, in Clash of Civilizations, I worked on uh, Neapolitan, a uh, dialect of of, of Rome and a little bit Milanese, little bit. Uh, in um, in, in Divorce Islamic Style, I worked on Sicilian dialect. In, uh, in dispute over uh, a very Italian piglet, I, work, I worked on uh, Calabresi. Calabresi of Cosenza, because you know, there's, there's a, there are a lot of dialects. It's a dialect of Cosenza. This is, I worked on this. Uh, so there are three uh, 
maybe I can add uh, a for uh, simil fourth similarity. It's about uh, writing. Gadda, when he wrote his uh, his novel, um, Il Brutto Pasticciaccio di Via Mirulana, uh, he he uh, he he asked had to a, a poet, a Roman poet, uh, in dialect. So he wrote his uh, his version in Italian standard, and then he asked help. And I did I did this with my novels because you know Neapolitan is language, it's not dialect. And uh, I, I, uh, so I asked my Neapolitan friends to help me, and I did this with divorce Islamic style. Like I asked to my uh, Sicilian friends to help me and uh, we worked together, especially in, in the proverbs, uh, uh, idioms, etc. So, uh, this is, there are four similarities. About Pirandello, and especially the, his, uh, his novel, Fu Patia and Mattia Pascal, I think the most important uh, issue in my all novels, it's about identity. This is the most important thing. And uh, and Pirandello is, uh, is is really incredible in this in this issue. Uh, the most important uh, thing that identity is really uh, open process, really open process. And uh, in this novel, especially in this novel, we can see how uh, how we can really understand identity in this in this process. I think you're I think you're much more possibilista as it were than, than Pirandello is with respect to the changes in identity. Your character actually manages successfully to change, doesn't she? She goes from being a, a, a banker to uh, Yeah. But but it's not stuff. easy. It's it's really a big uh, a big challenge. It's a daily challenge. It really a daily challenge because it's easy. It's very easy to be uh, to be just Algerian. Or maybe just Berber. You have Berber cuisine, couscous, and uh, uh, other things. And uh, <laughs> or, or, or Italian. I'm just Italian. I have my language. And uh, or just American. You have your cuisine, your identity, your, your history. But when you have like me, uh, you have Berber, you have Arabic, you have uh, Italian. Now American, because my wife is American. Uh, so every day you have to negotiate this, this identity, and this this is a big challenge. And I, it's wonderful; it's not boring. Certainly, it's not boring. But you have to be creative to do this, to put Islam with West, to uh, to put Berber with Arabs, to to put Italian with uh, with uh, with Berber. But let's, let's think about that for a second, continuing uh, along the lines of what we said before about this kind of feminist recuperation, because it's not by accident, I think, that many of your most uh, successful within the economy of their narrative environments characters are women. Yeah. So <clears throat> let's talk for a second about these terms, literature of migration, second generation literature. It's not, um, is it a surprise to you? Or what do you have to say about the fact that many of the most influential producers of this Kind of literature, these kinds of literature in Italy are women. I'm thinking about names like Edmine de Loro, Gabriele Germandi, uh, or second generation writers like Cristina Alifar or Nigel Bachego. Are these useful terms? Does it make sense to talk about literature of migration in your case, would you say? Or, uh, or are they not useful categories? You know, I, this is a uh, definition. This is definition, and uh, when I studied philosophy, I understood the, the importance of definition. Definition, uh, Basically, is on, on every de definition is based basically on two concepts: inclusion and exclusion. Inclusion and exclusion, and is uh, arbitrary. You can say, okay, uh, and it's very funny. <laughs> this is very funny. Uh, uh, the, 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 the the story about my books, my books in Italian uh, um, bookshops. So sometimes I. I uh, I found my because when I this is really uh, this is like a habit when I, I, I when I um, when I go in the, in, the, in the bookshops or libraries I I'd like to like 
say hello to my books. <laughs> and then, and so I, to, yeah, to see where, 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 where we are. So it's very, it's very funny uh, to say that in Italy, I, sometimes I found my books in uh, uh, Italian writers. It's fine. And sometimes in uh, Mediterranean writers, it's fine too. Uh, um, Arab, Arabic literature, it's fine too. Uh, third world writers, it's fine. <laughs> Immigration writers, it's fine. One day, well, this is very nice, one day I, 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 I found my books in uh, women literature. <laughs> yeah, because Amara is not... You know, Paola, Francesca, <laughs> Carla, Francesca, you know, uh, Isabetta, etc. So I thought, it's fine to me. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's very important to simplify the work and the life for, for uh, librarians. And uh, so for me, for me, the most important thing is my literary project. So to be a bilingual writer, for example, to narrate the complexity of the, the reality, to reflect about the big issues about identity and, uh, yeah. Can, can I press you further on this? So, do, I mean, as, as categories, world literature, for example, let's take that. Is, is, is there any traction there for you? Does, it, does the use of that term have any implications as far as you're concerned for, the, for your aesthetic project, for example? Is it limiting? Is it expansive? Tell us more about, about precisely how you value those terms, because they have a lot of cultural currency. Well, I, uh, I think it's very important to, to understand the substance, not just the form. The substance that I, I tried really to be original. This is my obsession, to be original. And uh, so I'm a bilingual writer. I, I write my novels in Arabic and, uh, and, and in Italian. I hope that one day I can do this in English. But I, I hope to to do this in Berber, and finally I will have more four languages, four wives. It's like a metaphor because I I uh, once I uh, I said that I am a linguistic polygamist. So four four languages it will be incredible, very really incredible challenge. Now I have two, two. Maybe in the future I can. Uh, so my, my project, uh, my literary project, is based uh, basically on uh, working on languages, to communicate with different languages, to narrate the reality with uh, with uh, good instruments and anthropology in this in this way. It's very important. It's like very good good instrument. Uh, yeah. This is important for me. The definition is not really as... Uh... Um, reading your... I, I really appreciated your last... Uh, I mean, reflection about uh, your um, personal uh, challenge, no? So, a creation of uh, an original language, no? And reading your books, uh, what I found is actually this relation between the, your style, in terms of your personal language, so your idiolect, and this uh, continuous formation of a personal identity. You know, that probably as an end, or probably or as a, a goal, or probably not. It's just movement. You know? So I will ask you also to speak a little bit uh, about the relation not only with space and with cities, because uh, you change cities, you, know? you change yeah. the space of your uh, novels. And this actually doesn't happen you know, in other uh, Mediterranean or the crime fiction. So there is a sort of loyalty, you know, for example, Montalban and Deraval and Itzel and Marseille. So in your case, there is a, a research of different spaces. So uh, my question for you is also about your identity and time and movement in time. This for me is important. And then as a scholar of 16th and 17th century, I found this, uh, I mean, this reminds me a lot uh, of um, 
writers of, of the past, you know? and especially when Italian language was, uh, my, was a dominant language in the Mediterranean. So uh, this heteroglossia, so this use of Italian language by non-Italian, in the sense of people that was raised outside the peninsula, was something very common, you know? especially in the Mediterranean. And what is interesting in the past is also the uh, knowledge of Italian and uh, the and also the the study of Italian, not in Italy. You know? So there are writers that actually learn Italian, for example, in Istanbul. So uh, as you said, with that you want to write in different language, we have cases, for example of Polish writers and Ottoman subjects that they were Italian writers and presenting themselves with an Italian name. And they write in Turkish and they present themselves with a Turkish name. And this, for example, in the 17th century. So I think this literary immigration or world literature of what we want to define is also a chapter of a longer history that starts with the Italian dialects in the Mediterranean, like Venetian and Genoese, and arrived to also immigration of Italians to North Africa, you know, Tunisia and Egypt especially. So it's a sort of new chapter of a very long history. And in this history, uh, the city of Rome has a, a very important role. So my question is also about Rome. Because, in, for example, in 17th century, Rome was the hub between Europe and the Mediterranean. No? So it was really a multilingual uh, city, and in which the role of Arabic is very important. No? So the Italian language spoken in Rome, and not the Roman dialect, no? but the Italian language spoken by uh, the court of the people in the court of Rome was a very prestigious uh, register. No? And this is interesting. For example, there are examples of a uh, Jewish preacher coming from other regions of Italy, for example, from Ferrara, and preaching in Rome, and they were shifting their years of Italian. No? They were speaking Italian as Roman. So uh, in this story, is also very important the uh, knowledge of Arabic because European missionaries and not only Catholic arrived to Rome to learn Arabic in Rome no? in Propaganda Fide in the school of the Vatican. So we have these uh, scholars that were studying Arabic in Rome and actually they were learning also the Italian, they were learning Roman dialect and so there is this mixing between, in a very multilingual society, and but also between Arabic as not only as a Muslim language, but as a Christian language for Oriental churches. So I brought to you to speak about Rome and to speak about also this uh, mixing of language, but also this mixing of low and high culture, an example from 1671. So, there was a printer, a typographer, that entered in a grocery store 800 meters away from Piazza Vittorio, in the Suburra. And he was from Prague, actually, the this typographer. And he arrived in the grocery store, and he found choirs of the Bible in Arabic, printed in Rome, and of the Catechism in Syria. So these Romans were wrapping anchovies with the Bible in Arabic. So in this sense, I found this uh, little anecdote, some of, of your issues. So my question is, if you want to speak a little bit about Rome and also about your formation of your identity in time and this movement between cities, different cities. Thank you, uh, Mattia. Uh, Rome is central in, uh, is, is in two novels, Clash of Civilizations, Auburn in Britain and Piazza Vittoria, and uh, Divorce Islamic Style. 
because the stories um, take place in two neighborhoods, very important neighborhoods, where I, I lived actually, because I, I lived in Piazza Vittorio for four years and six years and Via di Marconi for, um, for four years. Uh, location is very important in my novel, and maybe this is the main similarity with uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with cinema, because you know there is no cinema without location, and in my novels, the location <laughs> is very very important. Uh, for this reason, I put the name of neighborhoods in the title. Probably they are the main characters in my novel. Uh, and I spent almost uh, 16 years in, in Rome. I, uh, I love this city. Uh, this, is, this is my city, actually. This is my home. Uh, because I, I have different homes, you know, just one. Uh, and I think it's, it's very important to, uh, to understand the importance of the city in, in, uh, in the novel in general. Because Rome became really international. Uh, they are not just tourists, of course. There are uh, thousands and thousands of immigrants from all the world uh, in, this, in this city and I, I had really a wonderful opportunity, possibility to, to, to meet the world in Rome. So in, in Rome I met Chinese, I met Pakistani, I, I met Indians, I met uh, Senegalese, and I met Arabs too. In Rome I met, I met Tunisians, Egyptians, Moroccans, uh, uh, and I have a really, really a, a lot of friends. And in this complexity, in this diversity, I, I tried to, to narrate something new. Uh, so after Rome, I, 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 I moved to Turin and I, I lived in wonderful for two years, two years in wonderful neighborhood, uh, San Salvario. And I wrote two novels, and I put the name of the neighborhood in the first novel, Dispute uh, Over uh, 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 Very Italian Piglet, uh, and the, the last one, La Zingaretta La Virginia di Ormea, we published next year in, in English. The Ormea is, is a street in San Salvario. So the city for me is really very important. The second question maybe about language. It's my, what is my relationship with the Italian language? This is very, very important. So I became Italian citizen in 2008, but I was Italian uh, linguistic, I don't know, it's very difficult to, to, to say this, Italian linguistic citizen. So I was a citizen in Italian language for for many years before. So, uh, and it's really very important to be citizen in language, not in state. And this is my critique about the state, uh, state nation, the borders. So I, uh, and I, I'm so proud, so proud about my, my Italian and my, uh, this part of my identity, Italian identity, because I, I made a lot of efforts to construct this, this identity. I construct this, this identity. I learned Italian every day. I loved Italian every day. So, uh, actually, I didn't make any effort for Berber. I was born and I found the Berber. I found my mother. And Arab, Arabic too. French too, because I, I went to the school and I learned French. But Italian, it was my choice. I decided when I moved to Italy in 1995 to learn Italian. I loved this language. And this language loved me too. And this is, uh, 
This is really incredible. This is incredible, incredible thing. And actually, in order to obtain my citizenship, now I am in process for a green card. This is another story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, especially the interview. The interview for a green card is really incredible. The question with, uh, you know, very incredible questions. <laughs> one, one day, one day, not now, because I'm waiting for the answer. <laughs> So, in order to, to obtain the Italian citizenship, I, I presented a lot of documentations, and interviews, and etc. But to learn Italian, it was really very really easy. I needed just passion and, and interest and, and love. And, and I'm so proud for this identity because this is my own. And, and the local identity and the local language is part of this construction of your Italian identity? Of course, of course, because you know, language is is like a, a human being. Uh, there is no static language. Language leaves. Uh, language leaves in daily life, and uh, especially in Rome, I I try to. Uh, to create a relationship with, with people. And uh, dialect in, in Rome is wonderful. So, uh, and I think the best thing in, in, uh, in, in any dialect is the musicality. The musicality of language, you can find it just in, in the dialect. And uh, there are wonderful metaphors, uh, images. Uh, and I, um, actually in divorce Islamic style, in the Arabic version, I worked on Tunisian, especially in Tunisian uh, dialect, and Egyptian and Moroccan, and a little bit Algerian. <coughs> but in Italian version, I worked on Sicilian. So I am uh, very interested in the, in, the, in the language, and especially in local languages. I think this is an important shift, because if we look at the internal immigration in Italy, uh, after the Second World War, for example, people are going from villages to Rome. Actually, was the opposite. No, was was important to leave aside the regional identity and the local language to be Italian. Yeah. For example, my grandmother, coming from a, a small village, never spoke when they moved to Rome to my mother and my uncle in that land, because they had to learn Italian for integration. And, and she spoke with us in that. No, we didn't. So in this sense, also when uh, Ijab Shebo came, so this, uh, with this kind, new kind of, of uh, immigration, there is an, a new perception of the local identity as part of the uh, Italian identity. So I think this is a good mirror, of course, for, of, of this change in Italian culture. So maybe, um, maybe I'd like to change direction a little bit, Mara, and ask you about uh, your relationship to Algerian literature. I, know that I don't want to focus too much on labels. When we were making our announcement, we, we ended up writing that you're an Algerian Italian writer, or Italian Algerian, I don't remember. But, um, do, you, uh, do you follow developments in Algerian literature, or do you feel that you are situated within um, a changing scene that's uh, you know, that's happening in, in Algerian literature. Yeah, uh, of course. I um, so I, I said that I'm bilingual writer, so I write in Arabic and, and Italian, and uh, I am so happy to be uh, to be present in in, in, in Algeria. And uh, actually, I have two publishers uh, in Arabic. Uh, uh, in Algeria and in Lebanon. So uh, I think it's very important. So it's very important to uh, to contribute in this uh, in this uh, in this literature. Uh, and uh, my style and my point of view is uh, really different because uh, my Arabic style is. Uh, is uh, uprights hybridic, hybridic? Hybrid. Hybrid, yeah. 
uh, style. Uh, and uh, uh, sometimes people s s said to me, uh, your style in Arabic is very strange. Mm -hmm. It's very strange. I said, you know, it's, it's mixed between Arabic and Italian and uh, different uh, languages. Uh, and you know the contact, especially the contact with, uh, with uh, other literature, so I'm, to, I'm thinking about uh, especially Italian literature, it's, for me it's really a big, uh, a big, uh, it's a big opportunity. Uh, yeah, I am in contact with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with writers because they are my friends and I, I and I can actually observe this this, this reality uh, uh, with distance and I th you know uh, distance is very important in in, 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 in writing uh, especially and uh, and I you know the, the, the issue is very very uh, very uh, big uh, so I can I can I can I can understand uh, uh, what are the, the positive aspects and the negative aspects in this in this church? And of course, uh, uh, I am trying and trying to, uh, especially in my uh, in my uh, my new novel, I am writing a new novel about Algeria in Arabic after uh, four years. Uh, certainly, my my uh, so my uh, point of view, my uh, my style, uh, my language is 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 is, uh, is, is different. Well, this, is this a novel about contemporary Algeria, or is it well, you know, after uh, so I wrote my first novel when I were when I was in Algeria in 1993. Uh, I published it in, in, uh, in Italy in 1999 in, in two languages. Actually, the novel was translated by uh, Francesco Leggio, it's a Sicilian uh, translator. Uh, so then, 2000, in 2003 or 2002, I, 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 I started to to write the, the, the Arabic version of Clash of Civilization of an Elevator. Uh, and in 2010, I, I wrote two versions of Divorce, Divorce Islamic Style in, in Italian and Arabic. And then, for five, five, four, four or five years, I just wrote in Italian, I, because I had this project to narrate the New Italy uh, especially in Turin, uh, so I wrote this novel and La Zingarata la Virginia di Armenia. So after five years, I and especially when I, I moved here in the United States, I I thought that it would be great for me to to try to understand my Algerian identity. It's, it's, uh, so I am. Uh, adding new identities, American identity, it's very, very hard, of course. So I, 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 so I thought that it would be great to understand Algeria. Uh, uh, because I, I, I realized that uh, uh, when I talk with uh, my, my Algerian friends, and not, not just Algerian, they had uh, uh, Many problems to understand the Algerian history, especially the 90s. What happened in the 90s with terrorism? And, uh, so it seemed, it seemed for me, the question that narrating Algeria it, it, it became like a metaphysic uh, issue. You can't understand what happened in Algeria. And I said, no, we can understand. I, I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to narrate Algerian 60s, 60, so from uh, uh, liberation war to to now. So in 60 years, I'm trying to narrate this Algeria, and then I can, after this, I I, I would like to uh, to start in the, the new projects. Uh, I'm looking forward to reading um, to reading that novel. Uh, it's interesting. I mean, you 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 write and speak in so many languages. I think, in fact, you're fully a linguistic genius, and I, I can, I mean, I anticipate that you will write in English. I'm not writing your English; it's very fluent. 
You don't speak about um, writing in French. I wonder if you ever considered it. Well, you know, the choice of, uh, of the language is, uh, is not a coincidence. Uh, uh, so I, I, I started to write in Italian because I established this relationship with, with Italian. Uh, and my, um, my purpose in the beginning was, and, and still actually, is to be original. So there are many good writers, uh, Algerian, Tunisian, uh, Moroccan, the, 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 uh, so the uh, writing in French, and they are really very, very good writers. So, uh, so for me, I need really uh, new challenges, and this is this is not a new uh, new challenge. Challenge, and uh, of course. We can we can talk uh, for a long time about the relationship with uh, with French, uh, uh, and this is actually, actually the substance of the francophonie in general. Uh, uh, but I, I can say just this: I I think that uh, Algerian identity is really very complex, and and French uh, the French part of the. Of this, uh, uh, the French part is very. Is we can we can deny this this uh, this relationship. Uh, it's, you know, the, this is this is history. Uh, but I I I don't like really the confusion between language and ideology and <coughs> politics. Uh, uh, and it, it really it's very very uh, very hard. And this is very, 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 it's very hard to separate French language with, uh, with the colonials. But I try to do this, uh, so I don't have really uh, problems with uh, with Italian, uh, with the French language. I have uh, I have a serious problem with uh, colonialism. Uh, this is no question about this. Uh, We, we talk quite a lot about uh, language languages, so let me maybe ask you a little bit about um, humor, uh, which is sometimes uh, perceived to be very much anchored in language and sometimes perceived to cross over languages or transcend languages or conversely to be untranslatable. Um, so you, you, know, you, you use humor in, in your novels. You have, you have really um, Great comic timing, I think, you know, this, there, in all of your uh, narratives. Um, I'm wondering, you know, how you think about your, your use of humor. I mean, my sense is that you're not bound by a kind of, uh, you know, a kind of commonplace that holds that, you know, humor transcends the kinds of, you know, cultural mistranslations, cultural misunderstandings, difficulties that are really at the center of all of your writing and that's that's really uh, easy, it doesn't really happen you know, like that. Nonetheless, um, you, you do um, uh, infuse your account of these uh, these relationships with, uh, with him. So I'm just wondering, you know, what, what, what do you think your project um, is? Well, so in 1989, so I decided to study philosophy in a, in a German university because I, I, in that time I thought that I needed uh, instruments, rational instruments to understand my society. Because there, are, there were and the, there are a lot of contradictions in the society about religion, about women, about politics. And so I said, okay, I, I'm going to study philosophy to understand, finally to, to manage. Uh, this uh, this big heritage. Uh, so after four years studying philosophy, hardly, so I I realized that I I couldn't I couldn't understand this society. Why? Because Algerian society was and is irrational. <laughs> so you know you can't use philosophy to rational to understand. And actually, I, I met, uh, I think three, four years uh, ago in Italy, I, I, I met a psychologist. 
I think if I, I think it, yeah, it, I think it's it's Algerian, it's Algerian uh, but he lives in, in in France. He said to me uh, that uh, to be like crazy and mad in our societies. He he was talking about Algeria, but I think uh, we can we can extend this to other. Uh, Arab countries, he said to me, to be mad, it's a good sign in this society. Because if you are normal in this society, that means you are, you are mad. <laughs> the concept is very clear. We have, we have mad context. So if you, if you are a part of this, you have, uh, there is harmony with this reality. This is a big problem. That's a wonderful idea. I say it's wonderful. So it happened to me the same this 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 this, uh, this situation. So and when I moved to Italy, I found a crazy society, a rational society because you know Berlusconi, for example, <laughs> is a rational case. You can't understand Berlusconi. You, you can't rationally. You can't understand Berlusconi. He was prime minister. And uh, so he is uh, the owner of one of the most important Italian team in soccer, Milan. He he has no, I don't I don't know how many newspapers, uh, uh, TV, etc. Banks uh, everywhere. And he was prime prime minister. It's and about the you know the private life of Berlusconi is uh, another chapter. It's not, so it's not really, um, it's not easy to understand Italian society rationally. So what is the alternative? The alternative is the comedy, it's humor. So you can use this to understand and especially to understand the contradictions, uh, the paradox. And in my novels I tried actually to, to, to talk and to narrate this uh, this paradox. There, there are a lot of paradox in Algerian society, in the Italian society. You uh, you touched on this before. Um, you know that you had uh, you undertook a, a doctorate in anthropology. That that somehow you feel that anthropology is you know integral to to your work as a, a novelist. And I'm wondering um, if you could talk about that a little bit. Again, you know, we're kind of confronting a, it's a little bit of a standoff in relation to this, right? What, whereby um, when labels are being applied, it is sometimes suggested that the literature of Im immigration is an anthropological literature rather than an aesthetically driven literature, and, and writers react against those kinds of characterizations. Um, but I have a feeling you take a, a kind of uh, you know, third, um, Root in the sense that you do channel anthropology, but in a rather self-conscious way, as someone who has um, studied anthropology. I think it's very important to have a good instrument, a good instrument, to uh, to narrate uh, 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 reality. Uh, and I found anthropology very useful in this uh, this uh, in this. Uh, sense uh, because I think the main important issue in literature is the relationship with the other what is love story the love story is it's a story between two maybe three or four or five people uh, what's the the, uh, the main issue in, uh, in uh, uh, war and peace, the first time. it's a relationship with the, between people. So my big challenge when I moved to Italy is to understand the other. So, I, I, so uh, uh, when I was in Algeria, uh, I didn't actually have a lot of uh, questions. I had a lot of answers because when you live in in your uh, culture, your your country, 
So you are protected by culture, by politics, uh, etc. But when you move and, and you start to, to, to live as immigrant, you, you are not uh, a part of majority, but minority. And this is a big, big challenge. Because people, for example, in Algeria, nobody asked, asked me, uh, are you Algerian? I'm Algerian. But I, when I moved to Italy, where are you from? Dovise. This is the second question. What's, what's, what's your name? Where are you from? It's very important. So you have to explain. And it's not very easy to explain, I'm Algerian. It's not, it's not easy. You are Berber, you are Arab, you are Arab and Berber, you are Muslim, non-Muslim. It, it's very, very complex. So you start to reflect about these uh, issues. And I think anthropology is really, really useful to understand this, this issue. Our relationship with the other. Uh, especially when you have many different identities. Uh, I think not just anthropology, but politics, history, a writer needs to have different keys to open different worlds, different doors. Uh, and I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very important. For example, philosophy, studying philosophy was important for was, was and it's very important to me, to, for me, to understand the big, the big, the big, uh, the big questions. And then, after seeing philosophy, I, 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 I needed to, to, to have uh, a strong relationship with my new reality. So in Italy and now, it's the same thing. Because every day I, I, have, uh, I have questions. And I have to be creative to find uh, uh, answers or hypotheses of answers. Cinema, for example, it's very, very important for, for me, especially Italian cinema. And I tried to use cinema and, uh, and, and literature, not just the screenplay, you know, it's very easy to, to make a comparison uh, between cinema and literature because there are screenplay, you know. I, for example, I, uh, in, in cinema, in the, in the movies, it is very important to to create characters, to have really very very good characters, and they, and I used to 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 work a lot on the, to uh, to create good characters and uh, locations. I, I talked about the locations. I had to live in the in the neighborhood. Uh, I lived in, in Piazza Vittorio. I lived in uh, Via di Marconi. I lived in San Salvario. I have to have a really good, very strong relationship with the, with the neighborhood. Because neighborhood actually is, I don't know, here, maybe in Queens or in, the, in Brooklyn, but uh, in Algeria, uh, people don't ask you, what's your religion? Because you are Muslim, or, uh, but what are you from? In which neighborhood do you, 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 you live? And it's very, very important, uh, the neighborhood. The neighborhood is, uh, is, uh, is an element of, of identity. For example, in Algeria, there are very uh, difficult uh, neighborhoods. So if somebody say, says, says, I live in uh, Harash, just to say, it's a very, very, uh, it's a very, very difficult, yeah, very risky neighborhood, uh, especially with, uh, with uh, Fans, fans of uh, their, their team, and we create a lot of problems. If somebody say, I am from there, you have to be very, very careful. Yeah, it's very, very important to, to understand this, this important part of identity. So identity is not just language, it's not just uh, religion, it's, uh, it's, it's, the, the, it's, it's, uh, it's too, it's, uh, it's uh, the, 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 the place where, where, we, uh, where we live. <coughs> you, you mentioned mixing uh, dialects in your uh, novels. I'd like to know if this is your way of tackling the big issue of diagnosia in the article. Well, uh, 
there is a big diversity in, in, in dialects, uh, in Arabic, so we have a standard Arabic and they are really uh, big. I think it's, uh, it's not really uh, very correct to say dialects, uh, because you know the difference between dialect and, uh, and language is, is power, the difference is power. We can, we can transform every dialect in, in language. In, in official language, if we have weapons and we have institutions and we have uh, power, it's a question. It's, it's really a, um, a power issue. Uh, but I think it's very, very important. It's really very important to to take the best of this of this diversity. And and the challenge, the biggest challenge, is still. Uh, to put together this this diversity and to create harmony, <coughs> because we have a lot of dialects. But if if uh, the creativity, I think, is to put these dialects and Arabs, Arabic standard uh, together and to create a style. Style is this. Uh, so we create style uh, working on on the on different registers. Uh, uh, I, I try to do this in my uh, in divorce Islamic style in Arabic question. I wonder a follow-up philological question. Three Scandinavian languages are all mutually readable, mutually understandable, and yet they're considered separate languages. In Arabic, you have Fusa and you have Lakja. Yeah. An Iraqi peasant who has never been to school could not understand a word of classical Arabic. Yes. Is that a dialect or does it become a different language or is it hard to make the difference? Um, I understand, I once asked an Arabic teacher, I mean, would you go to the train station and it was designed and uh, discuss a railroad timetable? Do you actually go through the rules of numbers that exist in the classical? I think you'd go crazy if you had to. And they say, oh, no, we don't. We do it in English or French. So I mean, how do you work? I think we need an uh, expert. And we have a uh, good expert here, <laughs> my friend, Tufek Manamar. Uh, because the problem, I'm not an exp expert. So probably I, I, I need more time <laughs> to explain this. But uh, I think that the, uh, the wonderful thing in, in dialects and language is, uh, uh, is the metaphors, uh, idioms, uh, images. <coughs> and certainly, there are uh, 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 problems. And here, uh, for example, uh, Algerians can understand the Egyptian, but the Egyptian can't understand Algerian, uh, Algerian dialect easily. Because, because of the medium. This is another, another issue, because we, we, uh, you know that we have, we have Standard language, uh, media. Uh, so, uh, but I think here again, for me, diversity, diversity is a big challenge. It's really a big, a big, a big challenge because it's very easy. I, I said this. It's very easy to to live just with with one language, one identity. But when you have this diversity, you have to be really creative. And uh, and in Arab world we have this uh, we have this complex uh, uh, complex reality uh, about uh, about language. Uh, maybe the question is about literature. You know, uh, um, very often uh, the, uh, original and uh, good writers invent invent uh, language. Dante invented Italian language. Uh, Manzoni, another big writer, invented modern Italian language. Uh, I can, for example, I can mention one of the most important Arab, Arab, Arab writers, uh, Tayyip Saleh, the Sudanese, in his wonderful uh, novel, Muslim Hijra il Shamal, the season of immigration toward the north. So he used the, the, the Sudanese dialect, but it's, it's, it's wonderful so, because it's because you know, the dialect is material. Is material. I am. I am. I am trying to, in my current novel. It's about Algeria and the story 
takes place in, uh, in, in Algiers, I'm trying to use the dialect. Of course, I, I have to work a lot to find similarities. And in Divorce Islamic Style, I, I worked on this. I, 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 I tried to, I tried to, to find uh, a common basis be, between uh, Tunisian dialect uh, or Egyptian dialect, etc. You have to work a lot for this. So you, you said, one of the things you said towards the end of the session was, my main challenge when I moved to Italy was to understand the other or to encounter the other. And from your writing, it's easy to uh, understand that what you have encountered is not necessarily the other, as in an Algerian encountering yeah. Italy or the Italian, but that you have encountered many, many, many others. Of course. And I was wondering if um, that came from being an immigrant in Italy, as in to be a minority or to be in the margin, realizing that the margin is the site of multiplicity, and therefore that other kind of diffracts into so many others with their languages, their dialects, their lives, their ways of seeing the world. Or, and, or, if it's something that this kind of multiplication of the other is something that comes in the act of writing, sort of writing, narrating, making the literature is an act of multiplying reality. Uh, or, if this is something you always knew, or always had in you, uh, in terms of multiple identity. Maybe all things that you, you mentioned, uh, I like a lot the idea of margin and the center to be, it's very boring to, to be in the center. Because you know, in the margin there are more possibilities to explore and to understand the, the, the reality. But I think the challenge, the challenge is in every day. I, I, uh, I can tell you this, this, this funny story. You know, Arabic language, uh, religion, Islam, is very, very present in our daily life uh, and is present in, in language, of course. So, I used to repeat uh, uh, expressions like Inshallah, good willing, uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, thanks to God, uh, Astaghfirullah, God forgive me, Etc. Etc. So uh, uh, once I said I don't remember the situation. That I said, Astaghfirullah, God for forgive me. My wife, American, said to you, what, what do you say? What did you say? I said, Astaghfirullah. What does it mean? Good God forgive me. And she asked me, uh, why? Why did you ask God to to to, to forgive you? What did you do? Huh? You want to offer something? And I said, no, nothing. Nothing. It's like, you know, when I say, when I say Astaghfirullah, it's, it's, it's just to breathe. Astaghfirullah. It's to breathe. To relax. And, uh, the same thing with uh, uh, God winning, inshallah. And the, th the, the funny thing that my mother-in-law Last summer, last uh, Christmas, she said, "Inshallah, yeah." <laughs> and uh, I was really surprised, and I said, "Wow, I will convert you in soon." Oh, oh! So the presence, the presence of religion in our language, it's very, really, very important. And this is, you know, this is really a, a daily, a daily uh, <coughs> challenge every day. Because, for example, this, this question about using God in, in, in daily life, in language, etc. So, in, in Algeria, it's not a problem. Because all, all, all people do this. But when you live with, some, with someone different, you have to give an answer. Because here's a new question. You have to go to, to give the new answer. So, for this, I think it's very important to... I, 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 told, I, 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 told, I, I, I said that uh, the negotiation is, is every day, is every time. And I, for me, it is the way to be uh, creative, because you have to reflect every time. Uh, I just wanted to, to move the discussion to maybe the reception of your work uh, in Italian society or you know, wherever you have published. Because I was thinking it's great that uh, your first book, which is wonderful, was uh, chosen by Yale to, as, an, as a book that 
by Sita to be read. But what about Italy? I mean, your work is so important in that society. And what has been the reception? I don't know, I think about high schools. Or yeah. and you, you know, it's been recognized by critics, but what about the rest? Certainly in, in Rome, I, I am very famous. <laughs> Certainly in Rome. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think I, I had and I have a really good audience uh, in Italy. Uh, um, and uh, my, my book was uh, so... Uh, the, the, in school, in schools, they use my, uh, my, my novels in different grade of... Uh, so the, the, Primary school, uh, to, from primary school to university, university, uh, because I think it's um, it's a it's a new way to to uh, to talk about Italian uh, society. Uh, uh, and there are really many big issues in my novels. Uh, for example. Memory, memory in my my uh, Italian memory is uh, is really a taboo. Uh, for example, there is uh, this big immigration from south to north, migrazione uh, meridionale. Is really we have just one movie, Rocco is with fratelli, Rocco and his brothers, uh, Visconti. It's just this novel in literature in this movie. In literature, we don't have really uh, other. Other uh, examples. So I try to uh, to talk about these issues because you know I am not Italian 100 percent. Non sono italianissimo. So I'm Italian, yeah, but I'm Algerian and uh, Berber, and I think this is my big advantage. Because identity, this is another incredible and interesting metaphor, identity is a cage. When you live in just one identity, you are in cage. So I try to, I try to, to go out this, this cage and, uh, uh, and in my novels, uh, Italian novels, it's about Italian reality, I try to uh, to understand and to reflect about a lot of uh, issues and uh, in dispute over uh, in dispute dispute over uh, a very tiny piglet, I uh, I worked on this on this uh, part of uh, Italian history from south to north and San Salvario actually the place the place where the story take uh, takes place. Uh, is the neighborhood where the southerners, the Meridionale, uh, when they came to Turin, the, the, so they went to live, they went to live in this neighborhood. So I went, so I went there and to there, and I lived there, lived in the, this neighborhood, and I, I talked a lot with uh, with, uh, with people uh, from from the south. And the main character in Zulagana is, is a journalist. He is from this background. He is from his parents. From Calabria, but he he he, uh, he was born in, in in Turin, so he has this complex uh, 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 identity. And in the last novel, but Zingarata la Vigilia di Via Ormea, I worked on this uh, another taboo. It's about Roma, Zingari, and uh, Roma arrived in Italy, especially in Piemontese, in, in Piemontese, in Piemonte, in the in the 14th century, and uh, and there is a really a, a big campaigns of uh, of racism and discrimination against them. So I'm trying to to reflect about this uh, this, this issue about Italian uh, memory. I don't know if uh, Elizabeth or Pamati you want to say anything about the reception, or you want to add anything to. Uh... <laughs> No, but what I can say is, um, I can't say something about the reception here in the U.S. among uh, academics, which has been very, very, very uh, yeah. positive. Uh, for example, we're, we're conducting a search for a new 
uh, assistant professor here, and a good number of our candidates list your novels as texts that they would teach in their, you know, one of the kind of set pieces of the application process is your dream course, right? It would be an interdisciplinary seminar in which I did this, that, and the other thing, right? It's usually enormously ambitious, right? They all want to teach your book as part of, or your books as part of their ambitious dream courses. So I think that's a step that tells us something. I was just curious, since you mentioned memory, um, maybe on a, more, maybe on a sort of microscopic level or on a different on a personal scale, how you see the relationship between memory and language. I'm thinking of in Clash of Civilizations, this sort of absent but still protagonist somehow is has so managed to assimilate into Roman culture that he speaks, you know, he speaks the language better than anyone who was born there perhaps. But at the same time, mem his his memory of a traumatic past is what haunts him, and we only see that in these fragments in which he is recording them alone. So I'm, I'm just curious yeah. how you see that. Certainly, the, the issue of memory is very uh, important, uh, as well as uh, identity. Uh, because, you know, the, the, the big challenge for, uh, for immigrants is uh, to manage uh, their memory. And in clash civilizations, I, I tried to describe uh, the Bengali uh, community. Yeah. So, so they eat the, the Bengali food, they, uh, so they have uh, Bengali friends, uh, they speak just in Bengali, etc. So this is an incredible metaphor uh, of uh, living in memory. And this is a big problem, because when you live in the past, you know, the fundamentalism, extremism is this, when you live in the past yeah. and you don't have instruments to understand the modernity, the reality, the brain, it's a big problem. It's a really big, big problem. So the challenge of memory is very important. How can we manage, how can, how can we master, maybe, our memory? Uh, and uh, so the, 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 the challenge is this, and I think the success of, uh, of us as immigrants, as uh, uh, human beings, is to find like a balance between past and present, uh, between memory and, and now. Uh, and in, in this novel, is, uh, Amideo is uh, a good metaphor about, about this. He, struggle, he struggles with, uh, with his memory. And, uh, actually, I'm doing this in my novel, and not me. There are many people. So now after the, um, what happened in France and the Charlie Hebdo attacks, I was watching Servizio Pubblico. And um, basically there were like, I can't remember the city, there were these uh, guys from Morocco who lived in Italy they, their whole life, so they spoke with perfect Italian <coughs> accent. And what they were saying is that basically um, they would feel Italians in the beginning. It's just that the others, because of course the color of their skin is a bit different. So and they would be defined by the others as being uh, Marocan from Morocco. So they would they felt Italians in the beginning, but after they would define themselves in the way the other the Italians would define them. And basically, another problem that they uh, put in evidence is the fact that the economic immobility of Italy. So the fact that their parents would have like major problems to have a very good job even if they had skills, and the fact that they would be discriminated because of their origins in an economic sense. So what is the place of the economic immobility, I think, and um, discrimination against minorities in Italy, like in your novels? Do you think it's a major issue like for integration, or? Do you think that others are major problems when you speak about integration? <coughs> you know, in Italy we have a, a good expression, like we have a uh, war between uh, poles. It's a very, very strong war. And uh, in, in classic civilizations, we have an incredible and interesting character, uh, the, the concierge, uh, Benedetta, is, is from Naples, and uh, she hates immigrants. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think uh, this situation, uh, especially now, is very, very bad for immigrants because 
because there, there are like a, a competition, <laughs> bad competition between immigrants and poor Italians. Uh, uh, and uh, so, but uh, to feel, so feeling, to feel Italian, to feel Moroccan, I think it's uh, it depends on the situation still. Uh, but I think the bad thing, the bad thing, uh, is to to find yourself in in uh, in this in the situation to uh, to have to choose between two things. Je suis je suis Charlie et je suis pas Charlie. I refuse. I refuse this. This is not choice. This is not choice. I have to to have a right to say and to express my my uh, my opinion. And, and you know, it's really very really, very really hard because the day that uh, January seventh, I received I received calls, emails from Italy for interviews, and my friend. <laughs> Lorenzo sent, sent, sent me uh, an email saying, saying, saying oh, oh, they are, they are uh, uh, looking for the, the, the good Muslim, and you are a good Muslim. And I refuse to give any interview about this. Because, you know, this, when the situation is, uh, is uh, the context is, is not, is not, is insane. It's, it is just sharp. It's just sharp. You are with Charlie or not? You can say I'm, um, but so I, I actually uh, I refuse this this uh, this. I think it's war. It's it's, it's, idea, it's uh, idea of war. You are with me or against me? And I refuse this. And uh, and in my novels, I think, especially in divorce Islamic style, I tried. I tried to narrate. This reality about uh, Muslim uh, uh, Muslims in, in, in Italy and in Europe, uh, it's, it's, it, will take, it will take certainly a long time to, to discuss about this because this is actually the the, the, the topic of, the, the, of my of my dissertation. Uh, I didn't publish my dissertation. I published novel. Uh, this is my strategy of writing. Before writing, I, I have to do a lot of research and uh, documentation. And so if you really uh, want to understand this reality of, uh, of Muslims uh, in, uh, in Europe, I think uh, it would be great to read the divorce Islamic style. Uh, because they are really, uh, uh, they are really a good Good questions in this uh, in this novel, uh, and uh, in this, and I tried actually to be uh, honest with myself, and uh, and I ask really good good questions in this, uh, in this novel. Okay, I think we should uh, thank the panelists.